All right, welcome to the garage. Um, today we're going to be making a brat style motorcycle seat for this 1982 Suzuki GS750T. So basically what we got here are some very common, easy to come by items. We've got our half of a skateboard here. This is just your standard common skateboard deck. Um, if you can come by a uh, more old school style skateboard, it's going to be a little bit wider, have a slightly different shape, maybe gives you a little bit more to work with. Something else that I'm going to be using here is some uh, uh, rubber tubing here, a little bit of uh, insulating uh, foam cord. Uh, both of these things you can pick up at any hardware store. Uh, I picked this up at a fabric store near me and uh, it's just like a mat sort of faux leather vinyl. And what what I've done to it here is, while I was there I picked up some scrap upholstery foam. And this is just half inch upholstery foam. You know, it's pretty, uh, pretty lightweight. And I took it to a local upholstery shop near me and just asked them to um, sew the two pieces together for me. You know, they charged me 15 bucks, totally cheap. And uh, one thing to note, if you're going to be doing this yourself and you've never, uh, if you're going to be sewing it yourself and you've never stitched this uh, vinyl before, you want to spread the stitches as far apart as your machine will allow, um, just so that you don't essentially end up cutting the vinyl with uh, your stitching. All right, so the last thing we have here is some one inch upholstery foam, pretty lightweight, another scrap I picked up at the fabric store. Okay, so the next thing that we've done here is we've uh, taken our tube and split it right down the middle with our tin snips. Um, I kind of use the inside of the curve just to sort of help me out as I wrap it around the skateboard. So uh, inside of here I put this uh, insulation foam rod um, just to help kind of like beef it up around um, that edge and sort of uh, give it a little bit of a taper down here at the bottom and widen it out at the top. So I'm lucky enough to have a uh, pneumatic upholstery stapler uh, which I borrowed from my work. And uh, But if you don't have one of these, uh, we can also attach the tubing with just your trusty T50 stapler. It's just going to be a little bit more work. All right, so let's get to it. So we've got everything all stapled on here. Um, so again, I started with the front and just tried to keep everything even as I went around. Um, closer to the edge at the top, kind of tapering in here. On the back side, just tried to, uh, you know, kind of push the tube where I wanted it to go on my way around and then sort of brought it in, tapered it in closer here to sort of draw it tighter to the board as I went around. Um, you know, I didn't, you know, it's not 100% perfect. This uh, transition right here, I like a little bit less than this one, but I really think that once I get the, um, the vinyl on there, especially with this ribbing, you won't really be able to see any of those sort of minor imperfections. So I'm gonna go ahead, the tube's just running wild down here. I'm going to cut it off and um, throw a couple more staples in. And then, before I forget, I think what I'm going to do is punch some holes uh, just with the drill bit in the bottom of this. That way, you know, once this thing is all upholstered, it's not like a balloon that won't sort of deflate when you sit on it, which would just make it feel hard as a rock. Um, and then also, if any moisture ends up getting in there, you don't want it to sort of live in there. So that'll just allow, you know, any moisture that does get in there to dry out. So, um, yeah, I tried to keep the holes uh, away from the edge a little bit just so that when I wrap the upholstery here, I'm not covering them up. And um, drilled from the back side so that uh, you don't immediately dull your drill bit. All right, let's uh, take a look at the foam. All right, so we have um, traced our skateboard with Sharpie onto our one inch upholstery foam. And uh, we'll go ahead and take our scissors, cut it out. All right. 
Now you can see here I have um, taken the scissors and sort of sculpted the edges a little bit of this just to um, give it a little bit more shape. Don't worry if it's not, you know, totally even because you'll be able to refine the shape of the seat and that edge a little bit as you stretch the uh, vinyl and uh, that half inch upholstery foam over the seat itself. Alright, so I've got the deck laid out and um, taken the sharpie and sort of traced a preliminary sort of cut line around the board. Um, I want to leave plenty of room so that when I cut this, I still have plenty to grab here and pull this tight. Um, you know, have enough like area so I have enough grip to pull this tight before I staple it around. And then we'll come back and trim it again later after it's all tagged down. Um, didn't really leave any foam down here because I don't really need it or want it. This is down where it slides underneath the tank. Gave myself like a little bit even more up here at the top. I have an idea of how I want um, to, you know, fold this over and deal with this, uh, the radius of this curve. But, you know, I kind of don't want to end up screwing myself by cutting it too short. So yeah, I can always trim it again later. All right, so as I'm stapling this down, um, I basically rolled it underneath, and then, you know, I encountered a problem. Basically, the staples were essentially just, like, cutting their way through and tearing through the, uh, the vinyl here. So, luckily, I happen to have some, uh, you know, like, rubber sheeting here. It's about an eighth of an inch thick, probably a little bit less, actually. Um, but it's super tough, and, you know, it seems to be holding really well. Um, you know, like all of my methods, I'm not trained in any ways, but I'm just like, eh, this seems like it'll work well. So, uh, we're going to go with that. As you staple this down, um, I'm kind of staying away from anywhere where I think I'm going to end up needing to do any folds. Um, just so that, like, I have enough free material to, um, you know, take a look at the fold as I do it to see what's going to kind of produce the best result and not be kind of already bound in by how I've stapled things down. Um, and you can also see like, you know, I was like, oh yeah, I'm totally giving myself a generous amount here, but I'm using all of it, um, right here and, uh, definitely, uh, would not want to have any less than what I have. Um, so definitely give yourself plenty of space when you're cutting this. Okay, so here I'm getting to the corner, and um, essentially, you know, when I was pulling this and stapling it down, I was just kind of getting it um, snug. I wasn't really putting a lot of force, otherwise it'll start to sort of like dimple all this in and looks kind of janky. So um, what, we're gonna, what I did here, though, is when I came to this corner, I pulled it, um, you know, quite a bit tighter. Um, and I also, underneath here, I, uh, you know, some of the material is starting to bunch up and uh, I just relieved that a little bit. Um, just be careful that you don't cut away too much material because you don't want it to get, um, you know, out close to any of your edges. So, you know, cut away any excess that's just making it too bunchy, but, you know, not too much. So I've just kind of tagged it down here, and what I'm going to end up doing is once I get both sides to this point, I'm still kind of staying farther back because I'm going to end up doing one more fold here, and if I would have stapled all the way out to here, then, you know, I can't use this to kind of tie all this down again. So, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, finish off these two sides, and then we'll get started working around the back edge. All right, so we've got the front all done. Um... Back here, what we're going to do is, uh, you know, we got to make this take the shape of the board without, you know, having a bunch of, um, you know, lame looking folds and whatnot. So what I did is I sort of tacked it down right here in the middle. Um, and I'm going to just kind of gather it all up, you know, really evenly taking my time to try to get to minimize the amount of folds and just do doing basically a bunch of tiny little folds along here. Um, I've got it tacked down in the middle so that I don't start over here and then end up like over here and realize that I haven't done enough and you know I've got a bunch of extra fabric to deal with so um, we'll see how it goes alright so uh, yeah we're almost there so this is what the back ended up looking like um, basically just a bunch of tiny little pleats 
and uh, fabric stapler was just, you know, too aggressive, was going to just pull right through here, so I ended up using the uh, hand stapler. Alright, so this is what she looks like. Got that all trimmed up, cleaned up a bit. Um, you know, this right here and here is all just kind of relating to how I'm mounting the seat, which I'm not going to kind of go into at all because every bike's going to be different. So, uh, yeah, let's get this thing back on the bike and uh, take a look. All right, there she is. Rideable now. Yeah, just very minimal. Nice, clean lines. Simple. That'll do.